Okay, first off, can you update us to the best of your ability on Trey? He's great, actually very fortunate. It was an awkward landing, but um, he'll be ready to go. Just, was that a surprise given how bad it looked at the uh, time? Yeah, but like, uh, the, you, there's the initial part of it, but then Chad felt good about it after they went back to the locker room and um, he's, he's good to go. So yeah, we're fortunate. Um, what stands out about Michigan? I know they've got a lot of moving parts both in who's playing for them and who's coaching them at times. Yeah, well, we're focused on who's playing for them. Yeah. Obviously, they're without their point guard on the road, but they still have good players, um, good talent, and I think, you know, any night in this league, you've got to be ready to play, but they still have some good pieces. Uh, Kim Wah, the transfer, has been really good for them. Terrace Reed's made strides. Will Cheddar comes in off the bench. Uh, Llewellyn is a he's an established player uh, coming from Princeton he's just dealing with that recovering from that injury but he's 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 done it he's produced um, and he's getting in better rhythm so uh, Terrence Williams got to be got to be aware of him Burnett so they've they've still got good pieces we have to prepare um, the right way and be ready to go this team, since the Nebraska loss, and I know they shut lights out, seems to turn a corner defensively a little bit. I know Tony Perkins got going oh, a little bit. I think it's all matchups. I think yeah. each game is a little bit different. Um, Nebraska's good with what they do offensively. Um, it causes problems, but each game is a challenge in itself. Um, sometimes it's matchups. Sometimes it's system. Sometimes it's um, how, how does that team play. But we... I think the guys have been pretty solid all year. Um, we have made some strides. It always helps when you make shots. Now, we did make shots at Nebraska. Um, I will say this about that game. I thought out of their 14 threes made, and I think Coach Painter said it, we were in their jerseys on about 10 of them. So give them credit. It was some high-level shot making. But we just have to continue to get better um, in all areas, really. Um, I think we're doing a better job of taking care of the basketball. Um, and I think that's going to be very important um, moving down uh, the final stretch of the season. How has your bench defensively embraced its just role of coming in there? you got a couple different guys, yeah. Mason, Ethan, yeah. Camden, all these versatile defenders. Well, with, Ma with Mason and Ethan, they, there's so much know-how, right? They've just been in so many games. They understand scouting reports. They've been in the league for a long time. Caleb as well. Um, and then obviously Caleb and Cam coming in. While Cam's new to it, both of those guys have, have a physical presence. Um, That's what we deal with every day. Well, excuse those guys. Both of those guys have a physical presence. They're athletic. Um, really, all four of those guys you just mentioned, they have a physical presence. They're good athletes. It's really helped us. Um, that, that's an added bonus to be able to bring guys in like that that can help you on both ends, and, and uh, they're doing a good job with that. I think Cam has the ability to continue uh, to make progress as a defensive guy. Um, he does a good job on the glass. He's just got to keep getting the reps, keep getting the experience. Those other three guys, they have a lot of experience. Seems like after losses, you, you guys have been so many, played so many best ball. Um, do you feel like that's apparent, you know, next day at, at practice, or, or do you feel like you get more buy-in after losses? Well, yeah. I mean, you generally, with these young people, you have their attention, right? Um, you, you get on a winning streak, and you have success like we've had. How do you deal with it? And, and sometimes... Um, we've got a pretty good group. We generally have their attention, but there's no doubt that when you have a loss, you're gonna you're gonna be hooked up a little bit more. You're gonna have their attention a little bit more. Uh, they're gonna be more focused, uh, attention to details. You would rather not have a loss bring that about, but it does. I think the thing we try to do as a staff and coach does a good job is is just even when we're winning, hey man. There's issues here. Um, we want to we want to put the fire out. We don't we don't want this. We, we don't even want the fire to start, right? But like we've got to. But sometimes it nips you, and then you've got to correct it. You go back to the drawing board. But we've got a good group. They're easy to coach, um, so there's no doubt. But I think if you ask any coach that after a loss, 
uh, you're going to be a little bit more locked in. Offensive rebounding has become a really consistent strength yeah. of this program. Is that just kind of becoming part of Purdue basketball culture at this point? Is it the personnel? Is there anything systematic you guys do to make sure somebody's hitting the glass at all times? Well, when you've got a really big person in there that can get you 18 of them, uh, not 18 offense rebounds. But I think we've always emphasized it, mm -hmm. and I think it's one thing um, that's really important for us. It's extra possessions. And I think the talking point is, like, if we can get those extra possessions um, from an offensive rebounding standpoint and we have low turnovers, we're going to be in business. You know, I look at a couple of weeks ago, I think we were all over the glass. Maybe it was a month ago. I don't know it's a long season, but we were all over the glass at Northwestern, but we turned it over 16 times. So we're generally pretty consistent with hitting the glass, but we've just got to we've got to continue to hit the glass, continue to get offensive rebounds, second chance points, second chance opportunities, and then keep our keep our turnovers low, and and that's a good recipe for success. I think Cam helps like coming in. Caleb crashes. Mason is is an elite and Trey, rebounder. Yeah. Um, so those three guys uh, off the bench, they're really good at going to the glass, and that's that's really good for us. Last year, uh, Brayden wasn't a volume shooter as he is yep. this year, and I know he's struggled the last couple games. But how important is it that he's got that confidence that I'm just going to keep shooting yeah. because I'm going to light it up some night? Well, I think it get everybody talks about confidence, and as a coach and as a staff. You can try to have you can have all the confidence you want in a player. Nothing's changed with us. We've got a lot of confidence in him. Even last year, um, it, it, it gets down to that person, that individual having the confidence to to step up. They know they've put the work in. So we're not worried about it. He shouldn't be worried about it as long as he's taking good shots. Um, we're good to go. We want him being aggressive. And and all that being said, like. Uh, last year or last two games like maybe he hasn't shot it well but for the most part for the most part he's controlled tempo of the game he's had a lot of assists thought he probably had a little too many turnovers the other day at Iowa um, but he's he's playing a complete game and then obviously when he's knocking those jumpers down and he's being ultra aggressive um, it helps him and it helps us kind of the opposite question about Fletcher he's taking slightly fewer shots this year. He's making a much higher percentage. Is this a less less is more type of deal? Absolutely. It's, for him? It's, it's exactly what we've told him. I told him the other night, our, our first road game last week after he played, I said, you less was more and you were super efficient. And that's progress because we have him up there watching film. I think sometimes you know, Fletch is wired to score it, and he drives it to score it. Well, now, man, he's making some really good reads. And if he can, if he can keep doing that, it makes him more valuable. And I think he's been super efficient uh, here lately. He just has to continue to uh, to do that. I think sometimes he makes some awkward, funky shots off the wrong leg. If he's got his angle, we want him taking that. But if he doesn't, set your feet, spray it out to the next guy, and he's done an outstanding job of that lately. How does a player, when they decrease their volume to improve their efficiency, when the efficiency goes up, the natural next step then is, oh, I need to shoot more because I'm being efficient. How do you see him kind of balancing the, uh, well, I think last not week chucking? He, he balanced it. Yeah. He balanced it uh, the right way. Um, I told him after the game, I said, while you were outstanding in the couple of games, you had 27. I said, personally, like, I think this is one of the best floor games you've played across the board. Uh, you were lower volume, but super efficient. You, you made the right read. Um, you didn't force anything. So I think that, that comes with maturity. You got to understand he's still just a sophomore. Um, and I think it also, I think it also is that we've got other pieces and then as a player, and Fletch is a very confident guy, now all of a sudden he's got confidence in others to make the play. And, and that's our message. Just make the simple play. We're too good of an offensive team that if we take the right shots, whether they go in or not, like as long as it's the right shots, that's what it's about. We've got a good offensive rebounding team. And then just don't turn the basketball over. Make good decisions. Make the right play. Is that 
earned maturity and confidence one of the biggest growth points from last year's team to this year's team? Yes, no doubt. And especially those two in the backcourt. Like, it was their first time through last year. It's a long, grueling season. We've had a lot of road games so far, and, like, it's a quick turnaround. So those guys have matured. Um, there's still a lot of season to be played. So I, I think they understand that. They've all matured. Um, and hopefully that maturity and that experience continues to come out because uh, there's just too many big games left. When Zach has three straight 30-point double-doubles, how do you not take that for granted? Does that still kind of impress you, or are you just used to it at this point? It's really interesting when you think about it, because uh, I was thinking about it the other day. Like That's what happens, right? This is the norm. This is what this guy does. But. I think he's just, he plays so darn hard. Like, he really plays hard. He competes. And, like, you see that, but we see him every day. And, and he competes. It doesn't matter if it's at 3 o'clock today. He's going to be hooked up and ready to go. So, um, yeah, I hope everyone appreciates it. I know we certainly appreciate it. We'll appreciate it some more if he keeps doing it. Like, that's the goal, right? But he's got the ability to do it. Um, he he under he really gets himself ready to play. Um, he's a routine guy. He prepares the right way. So um, you know, yeah, we kind of expect it, right? But um, you shouldn't take it for granted. Seems like he's 